Hi, it's Mr Townsend here. In this video we're going to go over important chemical and physical tests that we will use to identify our functional groups and organic molecules. If you find this video useful, make sure you like it and maybe subscribe to the channel that I have on chemistry. Right, um, the first uh, test that we're going to look at, and this is a chemical test, is the permanganate test. So if we have an unsaturated hydrocarbon, an alkene, or possibly an alkyne, we can add, we can take a sample of our alkene and we can add some potassium permanganate or um, sodium permanganate if you would like. You add 10 drops of permanganate solution to your sample and you give it a shake. Now, if the sample changes color and it goes brown, that means that you um, have oxidized something, in this case an alkene has been oxidized to a diol, and this is a positive test to show the presence of a double bond or an alkene. Be aware that sometimes you can also carry out a positive test for an alkene using acidified permanganate. If the permanganate was MnO4- slash H+, acidified, it would produce a colorless solution. But again, the positive test for an alkene with a permanganate test goes from purple to brown. Okay, we can also, we have a second choice of a test to check to see if, a, if an organic molecule is unsaturated, it has a double bond or a triple bond, and this is called the bromine water test. So if we take a sample again of, let's say, an alkene, and we add some bromine water to it, bromine water is orange, uh, we add it to the solution and we shake it. If the solution goes colorless immediately or after a few seconds, that demonstrates to us that there is a double or tri triple bond present. The majority of the time we will be looking for a double bond. Remember the positive test here for bromine water with an alkene is that it goes from orange to colorless. The alkene has breaks its double bond and has a bromine added to each side to produce a halo alkane. Fun fact, did you know that alkenes are good for you? Well, they are if we're looking at oils and fats. So medical scientists have found an inter interesting correlation between fats that have lots of unsaturated fats that are fats that have uh, double bonds in them. So sunflower oil has 94% of the, the molecules in sunflower oil have a double bond in them. They are unsaturated. Whereas if we look at something like coconut oil, only 8% of the fats in coconut oil are unsaturated or have double bonds. 92% do not have double bonds. Well, medical research has shown that, un, that saturated fats like coconut oil or those found in red meats increase the risk of heart disease. And therefore, we can say from that that unsaturated oils like sunflower oil are healthier for you. Okay, so the next test we want to look at is how to test for an alcohol. In this case, we're going to talk, we're talking about primary and secondary alcohols and we use an acidified permanganate test. So if we take a sample of an alcohol and we add permanganate, in this case it's different than the one we've done earlier, it ha also has acid added to it, H+, which is why there is a forward, forward slash H+. We add it to the alcohol, and then we take the sample and we place it in a water bath. So the water bath would be a beaker of water sitting over a Bunsen burner, and it may be boiling or at a very high temperature, 80 degrees Celsius or so. If we leave it there for five minutes and there is an alcohol present, a primary or secondary alcohol, it will go colorless. So the positive test for a primary or secondary alcohol is that acidified permanganate 
goes from purple to colourless. And the chemical reaction ha th that happens is the alcohol is turned into a carboxylic acid. If we're talking about a primary alcohol, remember primary alcohol is an alcohol that has um, where the carbon that the hydroxyl group is attached to is attached to one other carbon. If we have a secondary alcohol, we still get a reaction, but it turns into something called a ketone. So the alcohol group turns into this carbon double bond oxygen. So remember again, a positive test for a primary or secondary alcohol is to add purple acidified permanganate, heat it in warm water, and it will go colorless. We have another positive test for alcohols, and this is called acidified dichromate test. Now we take a sample again, but this time we add the orange dichromate that's been acidified. If we add the orange dichromate, we get an orange solution. solution. Again, we want to place it in a warm water bath over a Bunsen burner, so it, it could be boiling away, and we leave it for 10 minutes. If the reaction changes colour and goes a green or blue colour, then we know that something has been oxidised. In this case, it is a positive test for an alcohol, a primary or a secondary alcohol. Now that, again, we have the reaction of an alcohol going to a carboxylic acid in the primary alcohol case, or an alcohol going to a ketone in the secondary alcohol case. So going over this one again, the positive test for an alcohol is when acidified dichromate changes from orange to green in a warm water bath. Fun fact, did you know that alcohols taste sweet? So this is an alcohol here, it's called glycerol. Glycerol is 60% as sweet as sucrose or table sugar. Glycerol is used often in makeup like lipstick and in toothpaste. Here is another alcohol. This alcohol here is glucose. Notice that glucose has one, two, three, four, five alcohol groups on it. It is 117 times, well, not 117 times, it's 117 as sweet percent as sweet as sucrose, so it's a wee bit sweeter than sucrose. What you what gives some of the sweet uh, taste of sucrose, glucose, and glycerol is the alcohol groups here. Amines. So we can test for amines. Amines um, are a group of organic compounds. Remember that have an NH2 group. And the presence of the NH2 group makes amines basic. So what we do is we take some water, we add the sample of amine, we mix it around, and then we test the sample that's had water added to it with red litmus paper. The red litmus paper will go purple when we put it into the solution if an amine is present. So red litmus paper goes purple, or blue when an amine is present. Now the reason that happens is because the amine is a weak base. And when the weak base is added to water, it accepts a proton, and we're left with hydroxide ions. Hydroxide ions are the actual ions that make the red litmus go purple or go blue. Right, um, another thing to note about amines is their odour, or how they smell. So small chain amine, amines, so amines that have one, two or three carbons, and if they only have one amine group of them, they smell a bit like ammonia, and um, so ammonia is that sharp smell that you, you can smell when you're cleaning with the ammonia bleach or cleaning solution. Um, as you get more compounds than some um, groups of amo some ammonia compounds with just one amine group start to smell more like uh, fish or fresh fish. If you look at these two uh, diamine compounds or compounds that have two amine groups on them, 
we get uh, two interesting chemicals called putrescine and cadaverine. Now, interesting, um, putre is the um, base for the uh, putrid, the name putrid. And of course, both of these so smell like rotten flesh. And cadaver is uh, the name of a dead body. So both of these diamines are major contributions to the smell that you get from rotten fish and meat. And they're produced when bacteria break down the amino acids and proteins in um, uh, the flesh of fish and animals. So that's what amines smell like. Carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acid, again, like an amine, is, uh, has a specific um, property to it. It's an acid. Um, this test that we carry out where we're going to add carboxylic acid to water, we shake it, we get a solution, and we're going to add blue litmus paper. This is actually a physical test, right? It, this is not a chemical test, but we can draw the chemical reaction as to why this reacts. So I put blue litmus paper in there, and it goes red. Now, why does it go red? It goes red because we've produced an acidic solution. And the acidic solution happens because carboxylic acid is a weak acid. It donates its proton to the H2O, to the water, to make this hydroxide ion that will turn the blue litmus paper red. Now, remember this happens because carboxylic acids partially dissociate with water to produce hydronium ions. Blue litmus paper goes red for carboxylic acids that have been mixed with water. Um, a test, definitive test or a better test for carboxylic acid is to add sodium carbonate. We can add, we can add sodium carbonate um, in the form of an aqueous solution, that is the sodium carbonate is dissolved in water. When we add it to the acid, it will react with the acid and produce carbon dioxide. The observation that we see is the bubbles being produced or fizzing in the solution. We could also add sodium carbonate as a solid and it would do the same thing. So a positive test for a carboxylic acid is to add sodium carbonate and we see fizz in solution or bubbles. Now the reason this happens is because a carboxylic acid will react with the carbonate to produce carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide is the gas that we see fizzing off. Okay, just to quickly, carboxylic acids also have distinct odors. We say that they have sharp odors. That is that um, you can feel a sharp uh, sensation in your nostril when you smell them. In particular, some carboxylic acids have particular odors that are relate, relate to specific compounds they come from. So butanoic acid um, comes from the compound called butter, which that's where butano, uh, butane and butanoic originates from. Now, it, it would smell like rancid butter, or it would smell like milk that has been vomited up by a baby. Uh, it's not a very pleasant smell. Ethanoic acid, we, we know the sharp smell of ethanoic acid, that's the smell of vinegar. Um, and uh, this is what the, the distinctive type of smell that we get from um, all carboxylic acids, is that sharp smell in, in the back of our nose. Okay, so those, that's a summary of the chemical tests that we need to know at level 2 chemistry. But we also need to know whether solutions are soluble in water. That is, if we add them to water and shake, they are miscable or they mix and we don't see two layers. If I take a sample and I add it to water and I see two distinct layers after I have shaken it, then it would be insoluble. If the two layers mix after shaking it, they are miscible or they are soluble in water. So we can take a solution and see if it's miscible or we'll see if it dissolves when we add it to water. So it's a, a test. Now what it tells us is alcohols, amines and carboxylic acids will dissolve in water. 
but only alcohols that have one to four carbons will dissolve in water. Only amines that have one to three carbons will dissolve in water, and only carboxylic acids with one to three will dissolve in water. If they are larger than that, they will not dissolve in water. So this dissolving test tells us that it's one of these three types of compounds of these sizes. If, now, sorry, quickly, the reason they dissolve is they form something called hydrogen bonds or special attractions with water that help them dissolve. So if the compound is added and we shake it, but it stays as two separate layers, they're said to be immiscible, right? They do not mix. You get two different layers like oil sitting on top of water. If um, it is insoluble in water, it's because it has six or more atoms, or it could be four if it's an alcohol, it could, uh, sorry, it could be five or more if it's an alcohol, it could be four or more if it's a, uh, amine or carboxylic acids. Um, generally, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and haloalkynes are always insoluble in water. Now, if we have about five carbons, sometimes an amine, a carboxylic acid, or an alcohol, a little tiny bit of it could dissolve. So you just put a little bit, it may dissolve in water. Anyway, this is how we use solubility to separate or identify some of the organic compounds in water. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope that it's been helpful. Remember, just uh, keep a lookout for any extra videos to help you with NCA chemistry.